Hey there, it's your friendly neighborhood ELA teacher. And I wanna to talk to you for just a few minutes about your phone, your smartphone. See, I read an article on my smartphone called Have Smartphones Destroyed a Generation? It says that post-millennials like you are physically safer than teenagers ever have been. Unfortunately, your generation might be on the verge of a mental health crisis. Now, teenagers have always been, let's call, individualistic. And that trend really started with the baby boomers, your grandparents. Generation X and then Y, they raised the bar a bit, but millennials, they took it to a whole new level. Your generation is called the iGen. If you were born between 1995 and 2012, you don't know what life was like before the internet. See, 2012 is a pretty pivotal year in this research. That's the first year that more than 50% of Americans owned a smartphone. That's also the year that researchers saw steep shifts in teen behaviors and emotional states. There was a big break from other generations. Some of these changes were positive. Like I said, you're physically safer than ever before. You're less likely to get into a car accident. You're less likely to try alcohol or get in trouble outside the house. Some of these changes, however, are very negative. Psychologically, the iGen seems to be more vulnerable than previous generations, and teen depression and suicide rates have gone up since 2011. See, your smartphone and social media, well, they're having huge effects on our lives, and they're making teenagers seriously unhappy. You know, I thought you might say that, so let me summarize the research a little bit differently. <clears throat> From the home office in Appleton, Wisconsin, here are the top 10 things you ought to know about your smartphone. Number 10, your smartphone hates your freedom. Well, it doesn't hate your freedom, but it makes independence a little less alluring. See, adulthood is being delayed by our smartphones. Today's teens are much more likely to stay home by their parents. They go on fewer dates than they used to. They work less than they used to. And there's a decline in sexual activity, but actually that might be okay. Number nine, your smartphone hurts your social life. See, teens just aren't going out and hanging out with other teens in person. Seniors now go out less than eighth graders did in 2009. In 2015, about 50% of seniors went out on dates. Before phones, uh, that number was 85%. Number eight, your smartphone steals your sleep. You think you're sleep deprived? You probably are. Almost 60% more teens are sleep deprived now than teenagers a generation ago. Your smartphone and social media, they do cut into your sleep, especially if you're looking at your screens right before bed or while you're in bed. And sleep deprivation can have major problems down the road, like sickness, obesity, depression, and anxiety. Number seven, your smartphone reduces happiness. Your screen time directly correlates with your unhappiness. Hanging out with people in person will make you happier. And those in-person interactions, well, they're down 40% among teenagers since the year 2000. The more screen time you have, the less likely you are to be a happy person. Number six, your smartphone can make you feel left out or lonely. Smartphones and social media can't replace those in-person social interactions. Teenagers who keep track of their friends online are more likely to agree with statements like, a lot of times I feel lonely, I often feel left out of things, and I often wish I had more good friends. Number five, your smartphone can increase your risk of depression. Screen time has a direct correlation to depression as well. Teens just aren't spending a lot of time together in person anymore. Social media users increase the risk of depression by 27%. Those in-person activities like sports, religion, and even homework, they cut into that risk greatly. Number four, your smartphone can make you vulnerable to cyberbullying. Teens and technology can be a cruel combination. 
the smartphone can be used as a weapon. Harassment has consequences. Michelle Carter, the woman crying in the photo, was sentenced to prison this summer because her cruel text messages led to the death of her boyfriend. Number three, your smartphone demands your attention always. Let's face it, multitasking is a myth. Your smartphone can demand your attention even when you're not using it or even thinking about it. Its mere presence will reduce your working memory and problem solving skills. If you grow dependent on your smartphone, it becomes a magical device that silently shouts your name at your brain at all times. Some might say that's a sign of addiction. Number two, your smartphone might have long-term effects. The smartphone is a relatively new invention and the problems it might cause, we don't know the long-term impacts yet. We simply don't have the research, but we do know sleep deprivation, depression, anxiety, and other issues do have long-term effects and may cause problems into adulthood. Half of the people who suffer from depression as teenagers will suffer from depression as adults. And the number one thing you ought to know about your smartphone, the person who designed your phone is afraid of your phone. Did you know that Steve Jobs from Apple wouldn't even let his kids have an iPhone or an iPad or screen time? And you might want to listen to this former Google executive. Have you noticed if you ever log into uh, Twitter as an example? So there's an extra delay that you don't know how long it's going to take. It's between two and three seconds um, where that the number of new notifications on Twitter you have. So why is that there? Well, it makes that into a, what's called a variable schedule reward. It's like a slot machine. So you're playing the slot machine and there's a time delay and you're in that time delay, your anticipation's building and then you get to see how many notifications I get. And so you become more addicted to checking it again the next time. It sounds like there's just a lot of sort of trickery going on here. I, I call it the race to the bottom of the brainstem to, you know, get people's attention at all costs. You know, let's say I'm YouTube and I've got a certain amount of people's attention. You know, what's YouTube's biggest competitor? Probably Facebook. Or take the CEO of Netflix recently said that the biggest competitors to Netflix are probably YouTube, Facebook, and sleep. Meaning sleep. Sleep. Because at the end of the day, there's a finite amount of time people have. And if you're not getting people's time, someone else, some other app or some other part of someone's life is going to get it. So these services are in competition with where we would want to spend our time, whether that's our sleep or with our friends. There's this war going on to get as much attention as possible. Tristan, tell me about how you use your phone. At the end of the day, the thing that dictates what, how someone reaches out to you and whether they use Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp or my message isn't because they're thinking deeply about it, it's because it's just the fastest and easiest thing to reach for. And so I think we have to recognize that as human beings, there's just a certain set of things we're vulnerable to that, that do influence us. And if it buzzes right now, I would probably, without even thinking about it with you here, check it. And so if I don't want that to happen, I just have to put it away. In fact, my phone just buzzed right now. <laughs> See, and I just looked. There you go. Even knowing what you know, you still picked it up. And this is the thing that even the people in the world of persuasion we were talking about earlier, you know, all about these, these tricks of how to get people to use products and to use a slot machine dynamic, whatever it is, they'll tell you that they themselves are no less vulnerable than the regular person because these techniques work on everybody. It's just part of being human. Pretty heavy stuff, huh? What do you think? Well, what if I told you that using electronic devices more than two hours each day will impact your sleep and mental health? Okay. What if I told you the average high school student uses electronic devices two and a half hours each day? That doesn't include Chromebooks. Well, we're here to help. The first step, you can fill out the survey. Your homeroom teacher will tell you how to access it. This information will help Appleton East help its students battle smartphone addiction. Hey, as long as we're still talking, can I talk to you about Chromebooks? Because I've got a lot of ideas. Okay.